take over. Hey, Andy, Steve. Hello. Oh, hey, thank you, Scott. What's up, Andy? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hello, everybody. All right. Andy sounds like he's in different quarters today, which he is. So we're going to be blessed with his presence for the first half, and uh, we'll get going here with the trade of the week disclaimer as the regulars pile in just a reminder that uh we're a software as a subscription company we're not uh, brokerage so myself and andy being employees we've got some opinions but they're not to be taken as a literal financial trading advice you got to seek out your own professional advice for your own specific needs uh, we're just going to look at some charts and give some opinions and so that should do it for the attorneys all right, um, again, it's a very rich program. People are signing up every day, and um, it really does take a few weeks to get familiar with, especially how to speak to the program, what, what you're looking to get out of it. We'll certainly take a, a good 10 minute segment today in the uh, agenda to look at one of the cool tools that Trade Ideas has to try and maximize it. And so all these things together, uh, we will you know, try and help shorten your learning curve, whether it's these webinars or whether it's Barry's Live Trading Room. A lot of people in here this evening do attend Barry's Live Room, I assume. Oh, and I also wanted just to welcome the live stream. Uh, Michael has been putting together a um, kind of a prototype live stream. Looks like there's a, a good handful of people over there. I'm not going to monitor that chat room, but if there's anybody listening on the YouTube live stream, uh, Michael is there to answer your questions uh, as a secondary channel. So, Again, another little channel right in, right in the theme of things here. I'm trying to help you guys shorten your learning curve and bring as uh, much uh, attention to our live Q&A sessions as possible. Um, picking up the phone and doing uh, TI uh, trade support and customization and filter configuration support over phone just really doesn't work. So we make these points available to you. And then the daily support session, which I did today, Michael will do tomorrow. Jamie Thursday, Andy on Friday. We have Sean on Mondays. So you get five different flavors of approaches to the market uh, every day at 12 Eastern on these uh, live stream YouTubes, um, kind of giving a opportunity once every 24 hours. If you're a new user, pop in and pull up a chair and just fire away. You know, most of the time we're kind of riffing over there. So we need the content. Come over and, and ask a question if you need help uh, and demonstration doing something. It's an excellent way to learn and again, shorten your learning curve. So here we are, uh, man and machine combined is always my theme for the week. Just a reminder that uh, a human being really can't do it on their own. And it's silly to think that you can turn a machine on, turn your back, go play 18 holes and have E deposits every day work for you. Whether it's finance or any other um, industry out there right now, logistics, uh, medicine, in our case, stocks, it's a symbiotic relationship. So the machine works with the human. The machine helps us combine and curate some great ideas, whether you're using your own custom uh, scanning settings like I do and Andy does, or if you're newer and you're looking for some more um, interesting ideas out of the box, the AI can curate some ideas for you. And then you're better off managing those trades yourself. The AI is not exactly a great trade manager. It's a better trade scout to kind of find something in real time to show you what, hey, you might want to take a look at this. And then, you know, brushing the hands and saying you're on your own, you know, but you're better off managing the trade as more information comes into play each 15 minute candle. All right, so it is October 13th, not the 12th. And um, we'll start off with market recap. Very interesting stuff going on out there. I've got some thoughts, of course. A uh, quick segment for the AI recap. If Andy has any thoughts on that, he'll weigh in. We'll talk about the theme of the week, which is the trade of the week, which is NIO or NEO, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, Tesla, baby Tesla, nickname I'm trying to give it. Um, we'll revisit the back testing optimization. I've done this a few times over every other month, but it's worth, again, showing newer users who haven't seen this how to use a very powerful tool we have called the back tester. And that back tester can show you some things that. Um, you might not be able to see otherwise. I'm not sure about your question, Don. I'm still seeing the trade ideas web on our open screen. No, you should be seeing uh, our agenda here. And then we'll get into um, a couple of my positions again, swing positions and see how they evolved from last week, anything new. And then it's always nice to end on a few chart requests. If you guys have some ideas, you can throw in. We'll, we'll give you the signal when it's time to send those in. We'll look at uh, you know eight or 10 or so. Always helps to know if you're long or thinking about getting long and uh, even what price point, but um, we'll get to that point. 
All right, we'll save that one for Scott at the end. Let's go ahead and get into the uh, trade or the market section there. We'll get back to that NIO in a minute. Starting off as usual with the S&P, the broader index, um, very healthy, very clean air as we're calling it, um, as opposed to time machine here where we were back here trying to fight our way through that mess. We fought our way through and now we're actually extended again. And um, just a quick reminder, you know, in the heat of the moment, it's hard to look back and look left is what I mean to say. But when we look left at this spot, I actually was guilty of getting hung up on the no man's land here between the 50 and the 200, forgetting that, you know, we can look left and see pivot points sometimes. And there was wonderful pivot points and support and congestion right there. So it made sense in hindsight that that's where the S&Ps wanted to bounce via the SPY. There's our congestion. Now we've pushed through, boom, 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 boom. And, um, you know, you don't want to be establishing new positions on your own up here. You're going to want to wait for the jump rope to come back around and set up again. So this is what I propose has gonna, is going to happen. I uh, mentioned it yesterday and this morning as well. I think we're in for some sideways action because I'll remind people as this momentum line comes up to meet the price, um, a movement upward can consolidate in two different ways. Uh, consolidate number one in price, which would give us say a pullback, uh, or it consolidate in a second way, which would be over time, which is a sideways slide. And the sideways slide sounds like a, a dance move. The sideways slide just kind of waits for that moving average to come up, and that is really the most bullish of indicators. And you might even have one little moment where a little dip down and touches its toe down, maybe even touch that 10 period. That's where the market might set up again, and I kind of think that's what we're heading for. So if you're in stuff right now, be patient. We're probably going to slop around here for a few days and just let things set back up uh, towards the end of the week. Um, even more so, or actually, no, not more so, about the same. Um, in the NASDAQ, we put on a red candle, but it was a complete um, no harm, no foul. We pretty much uh, ended up where we opened up today. So first day under the uh, under in the books of a possible sideways slide action in the NASDAQ. And we'll wait for this momentum line to come up and pick it up. Uh, again, watching for maybe a morning shuffle down to try and break maybe just the low of that candle. That could ideally be a very interesting contrarian entry if somebody wanted to day trade the cues or the the spiders trying to be a contrarian entry. But there's no bear case to be made. I'm back to saying that because um, we pushed through all the tests that were there. You know, again, this market was a technical breakdown. It got ahead of itself. You know, and you know, when it gets ahead of itself, it wants to correct. This time, it corrected in fashion number one in time and price, and then technically tried to correct again, but found its support and moved higher. I think this time these moving averages are coming up to meet it. I think we're going to just correct in a sideways fashion. And uh, lastly, it's kind of interesting to note the um, IWM, Russell 2000. There's a lot of small stuff that was moving pretty hard last week and the week before. And the Russell 2000 IWM ETF there is finally maybe trying to get back to um, its original breakdown point uh, from the February COVID drop, you know, where the, is the SPY and the uh, NASDAQ are above, in the NAS case, the NASDAQ well above. And there's, again, is a great example of the new economy. If you're digital and you're set up online with an easy experience, you're doing well. I saw a very interesting off topic quote that, you know, the normal S curve of adoption looks like this that early adopters and everybody gets it and then everybody's got it. Well, for a lot of businesses like Amazon and buying something online and curbside pickup and ordering online, we did this. It was literally a seven-year acceleration of the paradigm of accepting um, a new uh, business model, uh, landscape, ecosystem, whatever you want to call it. And that's really unprecedented in the history of econ economics. Never seen anything like that before. So we accelerated that consumer adoption by seven years, and the NASDAQ technology is the winner. Time consolidation is definitely better, David. After a big run-up, time consolidation is the stronger of the two ways in which we want to see consolidation without a doubt. So that's all I've got really on the market cap, um, unless um, Andy wants to add something. Is there something you want to add, Mr. Andy? Uh, no, you hit it very well, except you can see, guys, there's very little resistance to, to <laughs> basically none to take us to those all. Yes, to the all-time highs, clean air. And just very, very clean. So. Uh, yeah, be careful if you're uh, tempted to get out of any good longs you've been holding or uh, shorting this market, you know, because, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 
of course, we, we don't anything can change that. Uh, any macro news or any elect, election news comes out, yeah, that could have an effect. But uh, technically, it uh, there's no there's not a lot there's no resistance really to that high. You mean like an October surprise or something like that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Something out of left field. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I didn't. One thing I did want to touch on, and Andy's already confirmed this, we've had this uh, misery uh, pity party together. Um, as I go through my portfolio later in the after, in the session, my portfolio of stocks did not participate in the market move that we have seen here. Uh, my portfolio is not long Amazon and Apple and Walmart, which by the way is really looking interesting. I think Walmart's story is really picking up. You want to play time machine game? Look at that right there. That is just beautiful. Yep. Push up. There's your sideways, mm -hmm. David. There's your sideways consolidation leading to beautiful things. Couldn't even get mm -hmm. a touch. It couldn't even get a tag. You're it on the mm -hmm. uh, channel line. Walmart, I think, um, is positioned. They are positioned yep. for the COVID economy and yep. they're becoming more of a NASDAQ stock. So um, I'm not long Walmart. I'm not in the long Tesla. I'm not long Netflix. I'm long other things. Tesla's starting to look really good, which we'll get mm -hmm. to which would be a great Breaking segue out of that wedge. Yeah. when we get to NIO, it'll be a great segue. Okay, so go ahead and take it over, Andy, and whatever you want to talk about is good. All right, All right. sounds good. Let me grab it real quick. All right, uh, now I'm back on this country internet for a few days, actually leaving today to go back home. I'll be leaving after this segment. This is uh, the AI today, and uh, if you're watching, if you're one of these ones that like to watch the AI, if you came into today, you would notice there were a ton of strategies in play today, you know. Actually, I'm surprised, I'm surprised. Fire off, but it may have something to do with the price action we had today, you know, a small gap down and then kind of a grind uh, lower until we pop there going into the last hour. Um, so not a lot of work work with today on the on the on the long side. There was a uh, a nice uh, short that uh, worked well on the short side today, putting on the brightest NTLA. Talk a little bit about it, and but it was a conservative call. In other words, big red bar yesterday, right, and a little bit of volume, kind of an ugly bar, and and then it tried to rally this morning, and then when it kind of uh, I guess. Holly called it a fade, putting on the brakes, uh, looking at that, I'm sure, that bar from yesterday. And uh, yeah, nice little drop there for the next hour there. And that NTLA provided some nice alpha. Alpha, You can see it, that's where Holly exited right here on the, somebody might want to have exited it once it took out uh, this bar. got to be careful trying to hang on to those for very long because they, they can come around and, and bite you uh, as proof in some of the shorts you see down below. Obviously, there's too many trades uh, to go through. I, I do want to point out one that was got stopped out that I thought uh, an astute trader, you know, could have really played this uh, a little bit better than obviously than Holly did. But I thought it was a great call to CYTK, you know, had a big drop there and three days of sell off. Uh, and yesterday was a nice little kind of bounce back day. Uh, and then it took out that high today. That's where Holly called it. Of course, she got, you know, a couple of weeks down is where she got stopped out. It was actually in the same bar. But this is one, if you're not accustomed to taking this trades, you know, right off the bat, and that's what I do. If I'm looking, if I, I kind of watch these and, and if like something I'll set up on the daily chart. I will kind of maybe watch them over the next uh, 30 minutes to an hour and see what's happening. And this provided some nice little sideways action. You can see the fast line there, held it, and then, you know, popped. I'm not one to say trade arounds. I, I'm not big on trade arounds. If I get stopped out, a lot of times I'm done with the stock, but uh, some people are not afraid if they get stopped out to go try it again. Uh, and this is this is one case where I, I do say by looking at the daily, it would have been a nice uh, little one to take as a trade around, or if you did not take it the first time, keep your eye on it and buy it because, because of the daily setup there. But other than that, you know, guys, you can sit here and look at the conservative uh, side right here, about even Steven, you know, a couple of nice trades. It's same can, can kind of be said with the moderate, with this nice, really nice trade here in EL, ENLV. And this was one that was doing nice little relative volume. I don't know if you can see it over there, but it's uh, almost five relative volume. And look here, pulled back to this uh, 
fast line on the daily, the 10 period moving average, and then I had a nice little uh, gap and go today. And that was a beautiful little uh, trade there. Did have to suffer a little bit of a pullback here when it, you know, uh, but nothing, nothing too, too bad, maybe 10, 15 cents. And then psh, nice little pop up there on, uh, on NLB. That, that's a moderate uh, profit there based on my uh, allocation, which would have been 605 shares. Uh, nice little, nice little moderate profit there in that one. But other than that, Steve, there's not a whole lot else to talk about. Uh, some of these ones we're getting right now on in NEO, uh, Steve and I both kind of cringe sometimes. And some and, and Michael, these are back tested and they work. But I am always leery of these giant gap downs, you know, and shorting. Same goes with the gap ups a lot of times, you know. But uh, keep an eye on NEO. We are going to be getting into earnings season next week, uh, and uh, that's when you want to watch. I always tell everybody, earnings season NEO works the best. So keep an eye on it during earnings season. She's going to have a whole lot more to choose from. And uh, but that's about it, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, even Stephen. That's about it, Steve. Uh, All right. All right. I'm going to hit the road, but thanks, everybody. All right. All right. Send it back. Uh, I'll do my best with the Q&A. Nate, I sent you a, a quick quick response there. Um, yeah, if you're not if you're not send, seeing trades being sent, if you have any questions, I'm going to show you something real quick here, Nate, before I move on. What you're going to want to do is you go to your account screen. I'm sorry, your help menu. And if I click that one time, it's going to auto send my robo log files over to support. So all you have to do is click that one time and then go to the email I gave you info at trade-ideas.com. Let the guys know that you sent uh, your log files, detail your question, your concern, and any screenshots you have, and they can dig into it and a support ticket is created there. And that'll be the best way to get back to you. All right, happy trails, Andy. Thanks for uh, blessing us with your presence from under your leg. All right. Under yeah, your, you guys uh, take it easy on Steve. Great stuff there. <laughs> He's going to be the only one. He's going to be the only one uh, man managing the uh, chat room. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Here All right. we go. So let's talk about the trade of the week. And um, you know, Tesla was an interesting. Make sure I didn't just mute myself because I have a bad habit of crossing my legs and it hits my button. All right. So that Tesla ch chart was kind of interesting when I pulled that up. Um, it's a beauty. I mean, if you're long this thing, there's absolutely no reason to get out. If you want to trade Tesla, um, get ready. You might have an opportunity here for a nice move. It's looking much like, again, Walmart did just a few days ago. You see that that slide sideways. So trade of the week was NIO. And uh, I want to talk about a couple of things here. Um, this is, again, same space. They're an electric motor vehicle maker, and they don't sell to the U.S., so they're kind of relatively unknown, but they sell a lot over to Europe and other countries. Uh, but it doesn't matter. The chart is very interesting. It's got that same look. And today it gave us a little test. I mean, uh, let's just roll right into it. I'm going to do the time machine game here. Okay, this is what it looked like on the weekend. We've got sideways action. Have we touched the 10-day moving average yet? No, but we don't want to. We don't want to miss a trade like Walmart showed. It didn't ever touch the 10. So, you know, we get into that range where we don't want to miss out. So we anticipate and to hope to participate. So day one was the weekend. Uh, the trade said basically, you know, I think it was above uh, 22. And Monday, there it is. It triggered right on the open and gave us a nasty, not nasty, but a frustrating little reversal. But ending the day in the range with a doji, no harm, no foul. And then today, it finally gave us that tag, you're it. And I'm going to have a little fun here and draw something. Remember, I've said in the past, um, sometimes it takes a... Uh, a, um, you have to pull an arrow back before the arrow can shoot forward. And that's kind of what I'm starting to use as a metaphor now when these, uh, my crude cave drawings, I'm trying to use this now as a metaphor that there is a counter move often before the move higher. And if you see a stock that pushed up and our sideways, really elongated sideways action here, okay, it gave us a test. I didn't care for that downward move on the open, but this is one of the reasons I say wait for the end of the day on the close where you make your swing trade decisions to exit a trade that's not working. I'll have an example of that later or to stay in a trade or get ready and get long and anticipate maybe a move tomorrow. I did it. I could tell if I wasn't in this trade today, 
um, after seeing this five minutes to the close, I call this a stick save to use another analogy for hockey players, you know, just the last second, boom, stick save. We didn't close below that moving average. We put a nice bottoming tail in there. That's a nice little formation. There's nothing to be scared of on that. So it's trying to shake you out midday and then end of, end of day, the true colors come in. And when we look at the daily chart, beautiful wick with a bottoming tail, I'd like to see um, a nice movement upward from here. We'll see if we can get that. Um, but again, the sometimes that counter move precedes the move you want to be in and getting in five minutes before the close for any other reason, you can participate sometimes on the following day. Now, I want to switch. I don't know if the person was here and I can't remember who it was that asked, but they said, you know, it'd be nice if, you know, I hear sometimes you have a short list of ideas, Steve and Andy. Uh, could we see maybe that short list of ideas? And I thought it was a good idea. So we gave some also rands to use a uh, horse racing analogy, I guess. Um, also rounds, I don't know, I guess horse racing. Um, so I popped three in there. It was you, Dave. Okay, yeah, so uh, I popped three ideas in there and let's just, you know, I'm not gonna say where to buy them, how to manage them. I'm just giving you them to put on your radar and GP was a new issue, alt energy. I loved the alt energy play, but we'll talk about that. Um, didn't work out the way I want it to. I'm gonna show you why I got out today. FUV, another electric vehicle play, because these have been kind of hot lately. Remember that Russell 2000 IWM ETF has been rather hot lately. And then PayPal, everybody knows PayPal. Well, let's start with PayPal. Um, let's just see how these ideas played out um, over the weekend. A lot of people like to have lower price stocks, but that PayPal was pretty darn juicy when it looks like that going into the weekend. There's that imprinted look. Kind of want you guys to see a nice push, sideways action, right off the moving average, and wish it's on its way. So PayPal, really nice. FUV, a very highly speculative, low play, had a low price stock, had a, a nice move yesterday, but really kind of frustrated that it gave most of it back today. So that's very telling. This thing might not be ready to do anything. It might be going sideways for a few more days. And then we'll get to GP. I literally sold GP today because I think a lot of you guys know Let's go in the time machine here. This is why I thought, hey, this was looking good. Closed above the 20 there. Nice green candle. This thing might be on its way. And again, also in the back of my mind, you're going to see a pattern here, green power motors. You know, so there has been a, um, a theme on some of these uh, alternate energy lower price plays that have been moving in GP. I thought might be one of them. But on the flip side, it's a new issue. And it's only been trading for you know a couple of weeks here. And I don't like to give new issues very much benefit of the doubt. So today, two days later, closed below the 10, closed below the 20, get me out, I'm not in. Small loss, paper cut, I'll take it. I can always revisit it. So there's my thought process on that one. Uh, I'm still in the FUV. Um, I did not take a position in PayPal and I am of course in the NIO. So that's the segment on um, trade of the week. And I do appreciate that, Dave. I think I'm going to start doing that. There's no reason why not. You know, let's let's include the also rounds, the short list, the second fiddles, the understudies, whatever you want to call them. All right. So what I want to do this week for the content relating to the Trade Ideas platform is kind of build off of last week. Remember, all of those of you that were here last week, um, I built something called trending elbows with just three simple little configurations, all right? New lows with the concept of these were stocks that had a 80 stock composite rating, so they're good looking stocks, likely trending higher. And this position in previous day's range, I only wanna see a new low when it took out yesterday's low. And by golly, most of the time in the first few hours of the day, the price would bounce and rip back up into the range. And if you're somebody who just wants to pick off little silly algorithm um, you know, dances, which is all that really is, is an algorithm dance, that's what they do now. They just bounce from one extreme to the other and they hit their waypoints and then reverse, if then reverse, you know, whatever, however they speak. So that's the back history on that little um, uh, scan. Let's look at some here today, some interesting maybe perhaps. All right. So there's the arrow on the day, there's yesterday's low, and wouldn't you know it, I'll just draw that for you. Just as one quick example, right off the top of our head, there it is right there. 
markup horizontal line yesterday's low that one little tick below look at that and then it bounced an hour back above well this can happen any time during the day i think we're going to learn some ideas about when it works best because we're going to use this back tester so maybe some of you who have seen me back test before will be rehashing some stuff but those of you who haven't um, you'll be able to um, maybe learn a few new things that uh, you weren't aware of in learning a strategy or trying to test a method or a strategy that you have. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up. I'm just, I know that the first five minutes of the day I don't want, so it's too noisy. There's too much of that that happens in the first five minutes. So clear up the first five minutes, and then we'll leave it wide open. Exit, I'm just gonna call this, you know, a three hour, three hour trade, three hour tour. 180 minutes after trade entry. We can always adjust that. Risk management. I've come up with something simple. You know, if we can risk 2% to make 8%, that's a pretty good one to four risk ratio. We don't want to be too tight. We got to give a little bit of little bit of wiggle, but let's see how that works out. And then advance, I'm just going to sample the last 20 days only because the last 20 days have been very constructive in the backdrop of the market. So as long as the market remains constructive, we'll know that this should work. If I go back 30 or 40 days, well, we're gonna have that nasty downdraft in the market and it's gonna really kind of skew um, our others. Those are eight and $2. Let's see if somebody caught something here. Eight and two, uh, you did. Ah, you got that, thank you. Um, wait a minute, eight and two uh, percent. Interesting, let's try that and see what happens. Uh, good catch, thank you. Always nice to have everybody's eyes. So we're not gonna test 40 days because again, I wanna remind you, this is the kind of thing that's gonna work in a bull market. If we start crashing again, you don't wanna even think about doing this. But for those of you out there who are maybe new and they don't wanna swing trade, you don't wanna take stuff home overnight. You're very much interested in, can I find an edge during the day? And if you can't beat the algos, can, you, can I join them and, and see their little pattern and maybe find a way to scalp 30, 40 cents or three or 4%. Um, we'll see how that goes. You know, now I'm thinking about that. That might be a bit much. Let's do, let's dial this back 1.5% to make 6%. See if we can get those. All right, so we'll sample 20 days and this is gonna be our first run. Yes, you do pay attention, Dave. It's probably why you're good at this. You gotta pay attention. So all right, this is our, fa our first run. This is where we're gonna base all of the future subsequent runs from to see if we can find improvement. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at is my machine freezing. That's a good one, strategy return. Okay, so 52% winners. Oh my God, 850 trades in 20 days. That's 80 trades a day. I don't think anybody's a machine and they're gonna wanna trade, but this is gonna give us the big block of marble that we can whittle down and find the happy Michelangelo inside there. So let's start doing that. All right, so profit factor of 1.44. Here's the only thing I don't like, and I've, I've run this a little bit. I kind of came in prepared, but the average winner loser, you can get hung up on profit factor. We'll try and get that above two. You can get hung up on win percentage, but the average winner, average loser really is where you're gonna start to separate your account from um, not going anywhere or just spinning your wheels. What does the share size mean in the filter? It means um, if you were based on 100 shares, all these trades that we're gonna take would have taken the account from 50,000 to 63,000 in that period of time. That's what that means, Simone. But we're gonna, we're gonna jigger this thing around a little bit. So optimization is our first step. We're gonna go to this tab. Price, this is a breakdown. Look at the histogram here. I can break price down by uh, $50 ranges. Okay, there's our bigger histogram, or I'm sorry, our heat map is what I mean to say, heat map. But time of day, this starts to get interesting. Let's do a 30 minute time of day heat map. So the green is basically giving us the thumbs up saying that during this period, the profit factor was good, the win percentage was good. So we're just trying to chase green and dark green and the blues are our amount of trades. Well, I would, I would, uh, I would subscribe to you that all of this down here is unnecessary. So it would seem that from my time Pacific, 6.30 to 8.59, that's our sweet spot. So our very first adjustment is gonna be made there. 
So all we're gonna do is we're gonna run again, and we're gonna make that adjustment. We're gonna close it down at, we'll just call it nine o'clock, which is perfect. That's lunchtime um, East Coast. And that's about the time that I stop getting interested in intraday uh, action and setups. And the rest of the day is just, you know, whatever happens, happens. So let's run again. Now we can compare. We can do our first comparison. All right, apples and apples, summary versus summary. We've done some improvement, okay. Um, strategy return went up to 30%. Um, our total trades came down to 500, a bit more manageable, 57% winners, and we're almost at the threshold, of the profit factor 2.0, where our profits outstrip our losses. Let me rephrase that, our winners uh, outstrip our losses by a factor of two to one and we can do better, all right? So first is the time of day. That's a really a really big one, time of day, because a lot of things don't work in the afternoon and it can show you and prove to you that you don't, don't wanna be chasing your method in the afternoon. But we still have 50 trades. Um, that's a lot of trades. Uh, so let's um, go to optimization again. And then the next thing we're gonna do is I'm always curious about, you know, a lot of these stocks might be little guys and they're doing it on silly tiny volume and big spreads and not a whole lot. So let's let's compare these trades to the filter of relative volume. So I've gone to optimization, gone into other filters, and here's the rabbit hole right here. This is the rabbit hole you guys can go down if you want to. I'm just gonna do a couple for an example. First one is going to be relative volume. We'll be able to break down all these trades that happened, what stocks had what type of relative volume? Anything above 1.0 is good. Let's do an interval of maybe one. Okay, interesting. There we go. So I would argue that, uh, you know, to get these nine, we gotta go through 19 trades here to get to these seven trades, which this green row is there. So it's not worth going through that row. We're just gonna get rid of all that. And we're gonna say, we're only gonna take trades that are um, no more than uh, 2.99 relative volume. And that should give us a decent, uh, decent breakdown. So we'll do that now. And the way we do this is we actually can come right into the row, which is this one. We want this row to be our maximum, right? So we're going to right click and we can change the configuration on the fly right here set max value we're going to cut out everything above that max above 2.99 here comes our configuration lock it in okay i like to run a new run after we make a symbol a single uh, a change so let's go ahead and run it again since we made the change we have to back test the strategy again we don't hit the run again button we have to go back to the um, configuration menu and run it again but all things else all other things will be um, remain equal. And then we're about ready to get another comparison. Oh, look at that. We broke the two barrier now. We're down to under 500 trades. So we're moving in the right direction. You know, I'm still not exactly sure. I like the average winner $1.19 and the average loser is 85. But, you know, the more average, the more win percentage you get, the more that will, will take that out. Let's do one more run that I think is going to help. And then we'll call it a day on the optimization. So we'll do one more optimization. I'm sorry, optimization, other filters. There we go. There's our rabbit hole. Another one I think is a great thing to compare to is what's the S&P doing today? What, where, what's the market doing today? With some of these things trying to battle it out on a bad down day and does that affect it? So we're gonna do S&P change today. That becomes our, our heat map and look at that we've got a pretty good area of which we want to draw. So it appears that when the S&P is negative, this doesn't work very well. And that would kind of make sense. They're trying to shake you out of a good trade. So when the S&P is positive, this works, taking it below yesterday's range and popping it back and buying it at the, uh, the low of yesterday's range and popping it back into play. The data is now starting to show us this. So let's make this one more adjustment. So we wanna say that this row here, everything and above, so um, 
that means it's going to become our minimum threshold. So we're going to right click and say set strategy minimum value is going to be flat on the day. And there it is right there. So we make our change. Good to go. We'll do a little one last run here and see how the optimization has improved our starting point run into our final run here. Make them all nice and pretty and tiled. Holy crap. I didn't even know it was going to be that good. We're up to a 3.5 profit factor. So the profits are outstripping the losses by over three to one. Uh, we're down to 300 trades over 20 days. Now, okay, we're getting into more manageable. Now we're getting close to a 70% win percentage. And this is getting better. This is getting a bit more acceptable, making a buck 25 and losing 75. We're starting to spread that out. This is a decent strategy return. So this isn't my game, folks, but I'm just trying to show you if somebody wants to come in and uh, be quick on the draw and try and um, buy things and hold things just for, for fun's sake, let's do one more run and say, well, what happens if we only hold it for 90 minutes? This is where you can start to come back to this menu. Once we've got it optimized there, now we can kind of backtrack a little bit and see what it looks like. Does it, is a 90 minute hold better than a 180 minute hold? It looks like it is. Look at that, our profit factor went up and uh, everything else is about the same actually. It depends on apples, six of one and half dozen of the other. Okay, so just to rehash, this is to show newer users um, the back testing strategy. You can take anything and refine it down and put it in your favor by using your own um, optimization, comparing it to whatever you want. And you'll realize that this is essentially what our AI is doing every evening. We don't have the ability to do that about a million times, but our AI through machine learning software does. So that's how the software is coming up with new strategies each day that hit those targets, you know, above 3.0 profit factor, but many other things in addition to that. So uh, it's the manual process of what I just demonstrated for you. And it's a lot of fun for people on the weekends who want to go down that rabbit hole for sure. All right, we've got another five or 10 minutes or so. Um, let's do this. I'm going to go through my positions real quick um, and just kind of talk about them briefly, the swing positions, and then you guys can type in and we'll, I'll take the first eight or 10 that come through and uh, we can talk about uh, those. It helps to know if you're long or short, but these are mine. Uh, all right, let me get back to, I'll just use the big daily drawing. X, I've been in X for a while, and X is now starting to be exciting, and I might add to X. What I see at X is it broke above the 200 where it couldn't do it before. Now it's kind of sliding sideways. This thing might be setting up and doing pretty good. So I will share the alert. Yeah, let's just do that right now. So I'll give you guys the trend. That's a great point. Thank you. Um, let's save and share. Then you guys can play with it. Uh, and remind, now, mind you, the one I'm giving you is the refined version. So um, that's probably the one you would want, I assume. So chat, elbows, alert, paste. It's in the chat window, you guys. Just look for that little triangle and you can pop that window open. All right, yeah, I'll get to those when they come in. Uh, yeah, I see you guys sending in some symbols, that's good. So X, uh, back in it again, I think this is a great infrastructure play, but the chart needs to confirm the story, as I said many times, and the chart might be starting to confirm the story. We'll see how that works out. Somebody mentioned Rocket earlier, and um, I'm in Rocket, and this is probably the best looking one that we're gonna see here today, hopefully for tomorrow. This thing has some nice movement, but I'm calling this that bird in the hand, bird in the hand uh, um, setup. I mean, it just kind of speaks for itself. The bird's hopefully ready to take flight out of sitting in the palm of this person's hand here, moving averages, supporting it. Um, I'm in the money, the blue, I've been holding it for a while and no reason to get out. Another one of my favorite stocks, TGB, finally was able to, oh, I thought it was gonna close above the 20, but it didn't, but a nice stick save. Um, pull the arrow back before it can shoot higher, possibly there in TGB, a small mining copper silver name. Um, I sold, this is a great example of, for any of you guys that heard me talk about the day and a half theory and why I like to take half profits after a day and a half, well, this would be a great example. Um, and the chart started to confirm the story and I bought it back here on that blue line right there, participated, got in on moving day and sold on day number two right there at the 50 where it made sense. Patting myself on the back, but I only sold half and um, whatever, it's now setting back up again. I don't really feel like I missed out much because it never really went negative on the second half, but uh, we'll see what happens there. 
what else? A couple more. FUV was, we talked about that one earlier, one of the also rounds. I took that position on Friday going into the close when it looked like that. Was happy yesterday, and a little bit sad today that it didn't follow through, but um, it's still in play. NEO, we talked about NEO. The trade of the week last week, I am still in. And what I needed to see was SWBI close like it did today, not like GP did, which we talked about. I cut. Uh, it popped back up into play and still showing me that the flattened 20 day moving average is supporting our last week's trade of the week. So I'm glad we got to that one. Um, a gold name, it's just, I, I just, I don't want to be not positioned in a gold name. And so I'm still in that guy and we'll just see what happens. Nothing special. All right. So now I'm going to shift over before I bring Scott back in about uh, four or five minutes, see what stocks you guys want to look at. So Dave Fontaine, I'm familiar with SNRE. We'll look at Vivo also. Good Dave. Vivo has been trending very nicely. Um, it's it's a fun ride if you can stay in it. At any moment in time, it could come back and tag that 10-day moving average. Just be aware. Look left, and you're going to see that right there. You're going to run right smack in it. So if you're thinking about taking profits and you're lucky enough to get $20.15 tomorrow, be a seller at that level and take a little bit off the table. It's much easier. And then SRNE, we're long this um, in the other account. Something happened after market, not quite sure. And it looks, let's see how much activity is there after market. Yeah, it's been trading down. So something happened. I don't know if it's if our news caught it. it doesn't look like it. So it was looking great today, but that is the um, perils of taking over therapeutics, biotechs, pharmaceuticals overnight. Don't see anything in that scan. Uh, you know why? Because it's on real time. Why? Oh, you know why? I know why. Because uh, because nothing probably came through today with the settings that I did. Here's what I'm going to do. Hold on a second. Let's do this, guys. Whenever you have made a change and it didn't work out, I'm just going to go back and restart the program without um, saving, and then that'll get me back to my originals, my original scan. Hang on one second. There we go. Um, there's probably nothing in there because uh, all of that cranking down and that, that maximizing I did, it suppressed everything today. So by coming back in and reloading my scan, I'll give you guys the base version. There you go. See, there's the CHRW showing that there was the last return in, this, in the CHRW. So let me grab that and then we'll finish up on the... Uh, We'll finish up. We'll do DQ last. Nate Nate brought in DQ, so when we get to that, we'll be done. So let me grab the original settings on this one. We'll call this uh, original version. And okay, back to my moving averages. So we were SNRE. Okay, be careful on those. Uh, Roku is the next one. Really nice move in Roku. I mean, look at her, never even gave us a touch on that moving average. And then a big push today. Um, there's no uh, place to look back on. Um, Fibonacci extension, I think you said you're in a, uh, uh, got in at Roku, <laughs> how high can it go? Todd, I don't have the time to do it here, but what you wanna examine is called a Fibonacci extension. Go online and do a Google search for Fibonacci extension and they'll show you how to take a line from this level at 59 down here and draw current lines and there'll be projected Fibonacci levels that you can't see in thin air because there's nothing up there to look at as a resistance. Todd, that's a good idea. Go look at Fibonacci extensions and see how that applies. Pins for Simone. Pinterest is looking good, another COVID winner. Um, riding the moving average higher bit of a fake out yesterday. I hate to see that. You'd like to see maybe a touch of that moving average on the open tomorrow, then maybe it will go, but um, it's very much intact in Pinterest. ENR is the next one. Building a base coming out of that, which is nice, but it's going to have a tremendous headwind coming up here with the 50 average first and then the 200 average. As you see, the 200 average played uh, a role back here, and the 50 average also played a role back here, so it has a propensity to um, pay attention to those averages. Uh, ACMR, <clears throat> kind of in no man's land, filled that gap 
Uh, it's on the other end of the mountain here after it all broke down. Again, same thing, headwinds, but if it can claw its way, maybe a couple days of digestion through that 50-day moving average, then it will have clear, clear sailing again. Um, and then we are at DQ. Yeah, Fibonacci extension, Todd, you're going to want to see that. And another, speaking of Fibonacci extensions, um, you know, if somebody wanted to see where is DQ going to go, well, they might draw a low off of here and a high up there and let the Fibonacci's calculate how much higher it can go. But um, DQ, nothing wrong with that one, Nate. Uh, sometimes, you know, when you get really extended from this moving average, it's always nice to take a third or a quarter off when you can, when everybody's rushing in to buy what you got. It's always, always a nice feeling. All right, uh, one last question from Dave. You might want to mention that Michael Noss is giving a presentation at the Wealth 365 Summit tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, and the registration is free. Yes, yeah, so if anybody wants more information on Wealth 65 presentation from our guy, Michael, and also I believe, uh, I think Brian Shannon's doing a presentation too, you're going to want to pay attention to him because we've talked a little bit about the anchored VWAP Anchored VWAP on something like DQ is way below us, uh, but Brian Channel will talk a lot about that as well. You can get more information on how to get that at uh, info at trade-ideas.com if you want more information on the Wealth 365. Yeah, exactly. He's going to talk on AVWAP. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, I got no Andy. He's on the road, and um, I'm all talked out, so I'll bring the slideshow back up and let Scott uh, make any announcements left. All right, thank you. Yeah, a couple items on the way out. Um, we do have, oh, excuse me, yeah, we have an ebook all about earnings. It will help you figure out how to take advantage of earnings season. There's also a couple of scans in there with cloud links that you can import into your layouts. So go ahead and grab that, trade-ideas.com slash earnings. It's free, easy to get. There's a podcast. We released a new pod the other week. And it's uh, easy to find. Search for Trade Ideas Podcast in your favorite app. Subscribe. One and then get ready to get the next one. Uh, fall Savings is a code that saves 15% off your first month or year of any Trade Ideas subscription or upgrade. So go ahead and grab that and use it if you decide you want to activate a subscription today or upgrade yours. Uh, Steve can be found on Twitter at Today Trader. Also find at Trade Ideas. Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook page to follow and share everything with your friends. And info at tradeideas.com is the best place to send any of your support questions. All right. Thank you, Steve. We'll have the recording up later on tonight or tomorrow. Send you a right. notification on how to find it. Thanks. See you guys next week.